This is a good video. All right, this is the video. Like, I've wanted to watch this video because I genuinely do not know how to get a tune for Karazhan. And I'm just going to admit it. Um, I did it, like, literally over 10 years ago, and it, it's been a while. I love that graph, though, or that little flow chart. That's great. One of the first things that people think about when they think of the Burning Crusade are attunements. I think In Vanilla, of... most of the raids Doesn't had matter. some sort of a tuning process. Yep. The most intense being the Anixia attunement chain, where you have to globe trot across the world, killing dragons, and yep. collecting blood, escorting prisoners, and others were as simple as just paying your way in as if it were an amusement park. The Burning Crusade takes it to another do. level, however. TVC attunements were way, 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 way more involved than vanilla WoW attunements. Like, a lot of the vanilla WoW attunements were like, oh, just get this item, you know, talk to this guy, kill this thing, and then you're done. Like, TVC attunements were like, an, they were an adventure. And considering I'm sort of on a guide streak here with my class, mm -hmm. race, and profession picking guides, I figured it might be prudent to also cover attunements. So yeah. this video will include every single attunement, mainly for guide purposes. If you look yeah, at this I, I don't know these. See it, it's a bit daunting. I don't blame you. It's not the first daunting. thing we Just need to good. do is to familiarize ourselves with the phases for the Burning Crusade Classic. Okay. In the original release, everything up to and including high gel players could technically enter on launch. It's just that to get to the higher level raids, you needed to complete some quests that required bosses or chains from the previous level raids. Makes and sense. it wasn't until several months that guilds actually progressed to the quote end game raids due to everyone's more limited what knowledge and skill ceiling do? at the time. But yeah. as Vanilla Classic has shown, without restrictions, <laughs> players can and will blow through these raids at ludicrous yeah. speeds. So Blizzard side of- I heard Joker say that he thought that people were going to kill Gruul on the first day. Like, they were going to kill Gruul on the first day of Burning Crusade. If that happens, I, I am going to laugh my fucking ass off. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's going to be so fucking good. Appropriate to lock many of them in the associated quest lines until they release in their appropriate phases. I think phases. Layer, you have to get a tune game will launch in phase one with Karazhan, Gruul's, and McTheridon's Gruul, you don't need that tune and then phase two is your Serpent Shrine Cavern and There's Tempest the guy, Keep. Dude. One of phase the best three boss is High ever. Gel and Black Temple. One of the worst phase boss four is Elaman. And lastly, for phase five, Sunbolt Plateau. All of these, but Gruul's mm -hmm. Lair, Meg Theradon's Lair, Zulaman, and Sunbolt Plateau do require an attunement to enter. Blizzard did come out and say that yep. you will be able to progress to the attunements before the raids are actually released. The example they used is Killing Alar, which is required for part of the Black Temple attunement. You that's so good because if they didn't do that people would like wait and there would be so much congestion as soon as the patch came out for everybody trying to do the exact same quest it would be really bad for the game if they didn't make attunements available earlier this is a good decision by blizzard you can do this prior to the black temple's release which again is phase <laughs> three they also said that the that's attunements will eventually be nerfed mirroring how they were handled in the original release yeah that's what they did so just a short history lesson here the Serpent Shrine and Tempest Keep attunements were hot fixed out shortly after Black Temple's release. Yep. So you can probably expect the same sometime. That after was Hand of a Doll, the I'd title. Imagine. Karazhan, Hyjal, and Black Temple did require attunement until Sunwell was out. So yep. probably at phase five, we'll see the same. And for the Hyjal attunement, the vials that you loot from Vash and Kael'thas got changed from only a few dropping per kill. To one Ever. dropping for anyone yeah. who had the quest. Yeah. This was a 2.1 change, which should translate to phase three. Th yeah, there's no way they're not going to have it like that. Like, only three people getting the attunement? That sounds like complete fucking bullshit. There's no way that's going to happen. Uh, they're going to make it drop for everybody. Uh, I, I would be okay. Like, there's a big part of me that wishes that, like, the attunements were account wide. Because, like, having to do the attunement on every single character is like, it's just so much time that you have to spend at a certain point. It's like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to play another character because I have to do, like, all of this other secondary stuff. Uh, I, I like the idea of getting attunements. I just don't like the idea of doing the exact same attunement over and over again. Uh, it's funny that people say that they don't like that, but then they complain about having to do Torghast on every character every week. Because it's literally the exact same thing. Uh, S-Fan made a pretty good argument for having attunements be character-specific whenever I talked to him about it. And he said that one of the good reasons for it is it populates the lower-level dungeons and stuff. And I, I can accept that. And I think that's that's a good reason to keep them character-specific. 
but it is certainly a big barrier to entry that would definitely make me reconsider like leveling another character because of how much time it would take. Ultimately, it is up to Blizzard on when they decide to change all of this stuff. They have been wrong before, so it's something I'd advise that you just look up if you're watching this video mid or late expansion. Yeah. So, I figure the best way to do this is to just start where everyone is naturally going to start, and that's with leveling. Through this attuning process, you'll need to visit several heroic dungeons, yep. and to do so, you need to be keyed for them, which you can buy you at the Revered, Revered Reputation yeah. with the five dungeon hubs in the game. I'll get into this more thoroughly later on, but for Hellfire Citadel, this is Honor Hold for the Alliance and Thralmar for the Horde. For Coilfang Reservoir, this is Cenarian Expedition. Lower City is tied to the Akendun Hub. Mm -hmm. The Keepers of Time is the reputation for the Caverns of Time Dungeons. And the Shatar is the reputation for the Tempest Keep Hub. The Quartermasters, where you buy the actual keys, are found in the respective zones where the hubs are found and are listed here for your convenience. I'll also have them yeah, linked in the description just, yeah. if you have trouble finding them. These are super them. easy to find. You get reputation for these hubs by completing quests in the respective zones or through dungeons. The lower level dungeons, listed here, give you reputation until the honored level, and the higher level ones give you reputation until exalted. The Shatar. I think what I might do is I might just try to get all of the friendly rep for each different dungeon and then do all the quests. That way I can maximize my rep as much as possible and spend as little time possible just farming the same fucking dungeon over and over. Because that's definitely what it's going to turn into. R is kind of tricky because there aren't a whole lot of quests for them and the dungeons require flying to enter mm -hmm. so really it's something that most people save for level 70. Yeah. So your strategy will really depend on what type of player you are, but in general the dungeons are going to give you better reputation for the amount of experience that you receive, and many people will just grind out dungeons for the majority of their leveling from 50 yep. to 70. That's if you right, do this, boys. you can knock out two birds with one stone That's right. and have a big head start on the attunement process. Exactly, Whereas that's what we're going to do. Round, by the time you hit 70, yeah. you will have to backtrack and run dungeons anyways to reach that revered level. The only downside is that it makes for a pretty stale leveling experience, at least in my opinion, so it does that's suck. where the balance comes in. I mean, to me, dude, like, I'm gonna be honest. For me personally, leveling in dungeons versus repeating the exact same TBC quests again, bro, that's the same thing. That's the exact same thing. I I've done those quests so many fucking times. I'm, like, the only ones that I'm, like, kind of, like, a little bit unsure ever like the shadow moon valley quest because i would always hit 70 before i really did any of them and this is what happened to me actually on the beta too so besides that though like i've done every single fucking quest so like i just dude i just want to get 70 as fast as i can if that's dungeon grinding then i do that if it's uh fucking farming zg raptors i'll do that like i don't give a fuck if you maybe want to do a mix which is what i plan on doing i would suggest doing the dungeons first because as mentioned the lower level ones in each hub give reputation up to the honored level. So mm -hmm. to maximize it, get it to honored with dungeons, and then save the quest for after, and you'll save yourself a lot of time at 70 trying to attune for all these heroic modes, and at the same time you actually get to go out in the world and do some quests. That's my preferred style at least. In my opinion, there's no right nor wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. Just do what you think will be more fun for you, since yep. after all, that's why you're playing the game in the first place. No, I'm playing it I for hope. my ego. Some people have more fun questing, playing it for ego. exploring the new zones, and some people find it more fun to do things efficiently. But Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really fun. Like, the ideal world, right, is like me and like McConnell and s and the boys chilling in Discord all night long farming dungeons. Like, that in my mind is like the... Th that that's the dream like that's what it's about man i digress um starting with the actual mm -hmm. attunement chain level 68 is when you can start the kerosene portion of the attunement and i definitely recommend you doing it then because you may as well get some xp while you're attuning right no sense in saving this particular yeah part actually that's a good idea if you really want to stay on top of things you can head on over to the caverns of time at level 66 and work on <laughs> dude me and Zach, every time I see the fucking name, dude, I, it reminds me, we, we both had our fucking computers next to each other, and we would be like, bro, what dungeon you want to do? But I don't know, man, what dungeon you want to do? I don't know, dude, you want to do the black more ass? Like, yeah. <laughs> Let's do the more black hell shit, dude. And we would say it back to each other, like... Ten times, and then we'd finally do the dungeon and ninja the trinket. 
<laughs> it was great, man. That's the real experience of Burning Crusade. And uh, I've told that, yeah, I've told the story before a few times. It makes me happy to tell it every time. And it's funny. What's so weird to me about it is like, I don't think it's funny anymore, really, right? It's, it's like, it's just stupid. But like, I remember when I thought that shit was the funniest fucking thing that we could ever come up with, man. It was the funniest fucking thing we could ever come up with. And then I see people in chat and then they're typing. I'm like, oh God, stupid ass kids. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh yeah, I remember. Locking the Black Morass dungeon as you'll need it later on. I'll go over that when we get to that part of the chain though. Yeah. So, located in the southern Deadwin Pass and eastern kingdoms is Karazhan. And at the base of the tower you'll find an NPC named Archmage Altris, who gives you a quest to take some well readings in the cellars and loot some quest yep. items from the mobs guarding them. Easy. On this note, from this point forward, okay. I won't go into extreme detail on the soloable quests. One is because the video would be two hours long. Two Ghostly is because essence. they're pretty self-explanatory. Kill these, go here, go there. I think if you have a pair So are the raids available on release? Did they say that? If the raids are going to be uh, uh, available on release? Okay, you can. Fuck. All right. I, I guess I might miss the first lockout for, like, maybe Magtheridon. That would suck, but, like, I mean, who gives a shit? I mean, I'm going to get the gear anyway. It doesn't matter. Like, Phase 4 is going to be out for months. For eyeballs, you should be fine. And 3 is to avoid spoiling things too much, mm -hmm. because the whole attuning process is pretty cool. And I think it would be doing it a disservice to dissect it with extreme detail. I want to at least okay. leave some of that discovery for you. But if you follow these quests until you get sent... That's code word for, I don't want this to be a 45 minute video. The Cadgar in Dalaran. He'll task you with collecting the key fragments to enter Karazhan. Mm -hmm. You'll be visiting some dungeons for these. And you can do all of the quests on normal or heroic mode. If you're 68, of course you'll be doing normal. The first one is held within the Shadow Labs dungeon in Akandun. It's the southernmost dungeon, but you'll find that you need a key to enter. In the original oh, game, God. you could just commit Sudoku and run past the gate in Ghost Now form, you can't do it, but can this you? is fixed for the re-release. You can't go through the door unless your body is already inside the instance. Boys, selling summons inside Shadow Labs, 10G. 10G, dude. All you need to do, just buy, t yeah, just just for 10G, and you get right inside there. It's not a big deal. And uh, you can you can't summon a Nether Storm. That's true, but you can summon over there. I wonder if they're gonna change that or not. You can, however, just have a rogue with 350 lock picking open it. If you don't have one though, yeah. lucky for you, King for the Shadow Labs is very simple. You just need to run the Sethic Halls dungeon, which is the one to the east. Yeah, it does. In seem the final easy. boss's room, there'll be a chest that contains the Shadow Lab key. Note that okay. in the beta, only one person can loot this. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but if it is, make sure that you roll it out. So, you now have access to the Shadow Labs, and at the end, in Murmur's area, you'll find this phylactery type device. Yep. If you have the quest, you can click on it. Oh, to yeah, I remember clicking on that. The first key fragment. Yeah. It is elite, so make sure that oh, you. Oh, dude, group. those things did a lot of damage. I remember that. And returning to Cadgar, he'll give you a quest for the second and third mm -hmm. fragments in one, which are held in the Steam Vaults dungeon in yep. Coilfang and the Architrize Dungeon in the Tempest Keep. Steam Vaults is rather straightforward, no key needed for this. The phylactery is hidden inside the water pool in the middle of the dungeon. Just jump in right here and you'll find it at the bottom, and kill the elemental and loot your fragment. This is why, I remember, remember when I told the story of my mom and Cody doing, my mom helping Cody do his attunement? This is what the quest was. I don't remember why they had to be in Steam Vaults, but yeah, this is this this is what it was. It's for his, holy shit. That's so cool to see, man. The Architraz requires a this bit more days, work, man. though. This is the uppermost dungeon oh, in the Tempest God. Keep, this dungeon which sucks will require so flying much dick. to get. This is the you worst dungeon. You cannot summon up here, at least as of the beta, so oh, the actual dungeon requires level 70. But you can start the chain to key for it at 67. Yeah. So again, something I recommend doing right away so you can get some experience while you're at it. The actual dungeon has a gate blocking it, just like Shadow Labs. Mm -hmm. And just like Shadow Labs, if you have a rogue, you can just have him or her open the door. Damn. Requiring 350 lockpicking. Dude, we gotta find a rogue. But if you don't have one, at least one person in your group will have to do the key quest I'm just quest gonna chain. get the key quest. To do so, yeah, I wanna just to have Area done. 52 and the Nether Storm and find this ethereal Nether Stalker Cage. He'll send you on a chain of soloable quests where you collect insignias, mm -hmm. kill named enemies, huh. survey some spots, and the finale will require you to kill an elite dreadlord, Ooh. which is intended to be a group quest. 
It is soloable by some classes. Here I am soloing it as a warlock, but I imagine if you're a warrior or something, you'll want to bring... Okay, dude. Like, yeah, you had to use warrior as an example of something that you couldn't do it. Blacksmith keys aren't available. I don't even know if you can do it. The black Blacksmith keys, the way they used to work is the blacksmith key level was lower than a rogue lockpicking level. So rogues always were able to lockpick and open things that blacksmith keys couldn't open, if I remember right. I could be wrong about that, though, but that's at least what I remember. Some friends. So you want to follow this chain until you get the quest, How to Break into the Architraz, mm -hmm. which requires you to clear through the other two dungeons in the Tempest Keep, and that's the Mechanar and the Botanica. Just like the Architraz, these do require flying to get to, and you can't summon to them. The final bosses of each of these dungeons drop your key fragments, you turn them in in Shatrath, and you get your Architraz key. And finally, you can get the final fragment for the Garazan key. Specifically, the key is located in this big room with all of the void walkers. That will aggro all at the right same time as you if they're anywhere the near each other. But that's not quite enough. Now we need to visit an old friend, Medivh, to restore the key into one whole piece. But you have to talk to Medivh. Unfortunately for us, he died a long time ago. Yeah. But fortunately for us, we have the power to travel oh, through time. Oh, yeah. And you can find him in the Black Morass dungeon, which is located in the Caverns of Time. Wow. But to get into the Black Morass, you guessed it, you have to get attuned. Oh my and unlike goodness. the previous dungeons, rogues can't bail you out. Everyone in the party has to do this. Oh my a good God. thing, though, is that, as mentioned earlier, you can do this part Yeah, so about those alts, guys. 66. So something I do recommend you take care of as you're leveling, if you want to knock oh, out two birds with one stone. Wow. So head on over to the Caverns of Time, which is located right here in Daenerys. In Jesus. Kalimdor. There is a teleport straight there if you talk to Zephyr who's located in the barn Shatrath right here on the map. Yo, I didn't know that. This might not that. be in at phase one, though, as it was originally added pretty late into the game. Yo, the put that shit run. in phase one. Regardless, reach it, talk <laughs> to the Drake outside, and grab his quest to be sent down into the Please. lair. Please. And you'll start the dreaded tour portion of this quest. Yeah, it took forever. This quest is rather infamous among players because... That's crazy. Like, I, I actually forgot about how many of these, like, little fucking, like, random attunements there were. It's like, oh, you had to get attuned to Black Morass. Like, I, I didn't remember that at all. That was the one I didn't remember, at, like, fucking whatsoever. I'm reporting to from Shad. I don't remember that at all. People said Shadowlands isn't alt-friendly. Bro, as I said, like, this is the kind of stuff that, like, yeah, later on, they made all of this shit account-wide. And now in Shadowlands, nothing's account-wide again. And, um... Yeah, the TBC attunements were fucking nuts, man. They, they were insane. I like doing them. I just didn't like doing them on every character. I think they're really cool to do for the first time. Minutes, you'll get spammed with whispers, and on PvP servers, you're on the risk of being killed. And trust oh, me, this game. spot is going to be camped like crazy. Oh, Jesus especially if you're on Fairlina. A tip is that you don't actually have to follow the custodian. You can just AFK right here where you pick up the quest oh. and grab a beer or something and come back to a quest completion. And I did do some testing. If you do get killed after starting the quest, as long as you resurrect right when the custodian returns, you will still get credit for quest completion, so... That's a PvP server strat, dude. That's actually, I'll be honest, that is the most useful bit of information from this entire video, I can guarantee you already. That's actually fucking next level. There's a tip for those on a PvP server. But once you complete it, you'll be sent to the Escape from Durnhold dungeon. Turn your quest in and accept the one to light buildings on fire. In these barracks will be clickable barrels, and you want to set all five ablaze to complete the quest. Then you kill the boss, progress into the castle until you find Thrall in the Sex dungeon. And here we have another escort quest, so proceed with caution, and make sure that everyone turns it in before you start it. This yeah, particular we escort that up. is a little more forgiving than the standard that you're used to, as you start the actual escort through a dialogue option, not by accepting the next part. So yeah, everyone they, can turn in they and accept the next part, on. which is called Escape from Durnhold. So just make sure that everyone is on this part by checking your quest log, and then tell Thrall that you're ready when everyone does have it. This part can be kind of tricky, as Thrall is full Zug and will straight up sprint into elite groups of enemies with no regard to his or your safety. I don't think it's going to be that bad. Like, we did, well, we did normal mode Durnhold Keep, and it was, like, super fucking easy. Like, one thing I'm really curious about is how hard these heroics are really going to be. Like, of everything else, I'm actually more curious to try out the heroics than any of the other tier 5 content, or tier 4 content. Is like, I want to know 
Because, like, the Heroics and Burning Crusade were always remembered as, like, these super hard, like, tests of skill. And, you know, you had to CC every mob. And, like, was this really because they were that hard? Or was it because we were that bad? And I, I don't remember, honestly. I remember some of them were overtuned like a motherfucker. But we'll have to find out. We were bad. I think it's probably a little bit of both. Yeah, they were hard. I bet we probably... I don't think I'll be able to DPS tank like as soon as the game comes out with the heroics. But I feel like maybe a, a week or so after, after I get like maybe a couple of uh, of like resets of Karazhan gear, uh, I might even be able to DPS tank at that point. And by tier 5, I think you'd be able to do it easily. You just have to keep up with them, really. The best advice I can give is to don't be afraid to let him tank, as he has a ton of health. You don't need to race him to the enemies. He you can hold his own so? for a bit, we'll so get some sips before you save his finely toned green butt. From there, complete mm -hmm. the dungeon as normal, beat the final boss, yep. turn into the blood elf, and then get the follow-up quest, and you're now I used to have to that shoulders, Black Morass. Warchief's mantle. And your goal is to just complete it so you can talk to Medivh. Yep. This dungeon works a bit differently. It's like tower defense with your I party always as the towers. This dungeon. My Portals job was always killing the ads. open up and send enemies to kill Medivh, and it's your goal to keep them alive. Yeah. Every sixth wave is a boss enemy with three bosses total. And after finishing, talk to Medivh and he'll put together your key. And congratulations because wow. you can now enter the Karazhan raid. You can now fight every boss except for the optional one. Oh which is god, Night Bane. the Nightbane. Using Bane the term attunement. optional lightly there because he is actually required for the Serpent Shrine attunement. Oh my so god. So how do you actually summon him? Well, you can summon Dude, him. Dude, I really loved how all of these things were, like, intricately balanced against each other, right? And, like, how many of these attunements you had to do. It really felt like you were kind of progressing and, like, making... Like, you were making progress in the game. It meant, like, yeah, was it, like, an adventure? And, like, I know, obviously, as I said, like, I don't like doing it multiple characters. That is annoying. But, like, doing it for the first time, and, like, if you have, like, one main, I genuinely feel like it's kind of a cool experience to go and do these things. Is it annoying to, like, not be able to do it immediately? Yeah, it is. But, like, I, I still feel like it's enjoyable. It's fulfilling. It's like, yeah, the yep, adventure, exactly. Yeah, it's an RPG. Like, summoning special bosses. I, I I wish they had more of this kind of stuff in retail, honestly. I, I hope that they add more of it. I'd love to see attunements and things like that come back to some degree. On the outer balcony area, right next to the back entrance. To summon them, though, at least one person in your raid will need an item called the Blackened Urn, yeah, I which still you have get mine. at the end of a lengthy quest chain. To start it, you Is need Julie? Honored Maybe with I the don't. Violet Eye Faction. Which you get by simply killing enemies in Karazhan. I think this rep is useless. But now, you may have heard about the week one Nightbane strategy. If you don't kill the bosses in Karazhan, you can continuously respawn the trash and yeah. farm them to get your reputation up. Yep. Just make sure that you don't kill the Shade of Aran, as you'll need them in the process of unlocking Nightbane. So, once you get honored, head back to Archmage Altaris outside the raid, and he'll give you the start of the chain, Medivh's Journal, which requires you to speak to a dude named Ravian, whom you can find in the giant room right after Curator. You'll be sent Damn. to a couple of NPCs nearby in the same room. You'll get sent to bring back Medivh's journal. Yo, I totally Shade forgot about all this. Then to witness an RP event on the balcony I talked about this earlier. This is where he deletes the, the night dragon. Bane. And you'll go outside and dig up a bone. Bring that back to Altris, who then sends you to Kelana Lathred and Netherstorm right here on the map. She'll ask you to retrieve two bucks. One from the Dark Weaver Sith, uh -huh. who's the first boss in the Sethic Halls dungeon. And another one from Grand Warlock Nether Curse who's the first boss of the Shattered Halls dungeon. Did they say if you're going to be able to get epic flying uh, for, for uh, druids at the beginning of TBC? You can't. Okay, you won't be able to? All right, so they're not. it's in phase three. I was curious. Uh, Both I didn't of know these that. must be done in heroic mode, so as described earlier, you'll have to grind out the revered reputation with the respective factions. Jesus, in this case, so Lower City and, and Honor oh Hold for God. the Alliance and oh Thralmar for the Horde. Returning those to Kalina will give you the Blackened Urn, wow. which you can then use to summon Nightbane. And again, only one person needs to do this. There is a special note for the Shattered Halls. This also has an external gate blocking it, which needs a special key you have to kill, like, or a, bell a rogue with 350 lockpicking. To get the key, you follow a yeah. pretty short chain. Head on over to the Shadow Moon Valley Zone, right outside the Black Temple right here in the map, and find a mob named Smith Gorlunk. He'll you drop a quest starter that you turn there in you Hellfire. The follow-up requires some trade materials, and after that, you'll have to take down a patrolling Fell Reaver in yep. the same zone to forge a key oh that opens God. the Shattered Hall's gate. The Fell Reaver is a group quest, so it's recommended that you bring four friends. 
So, or 40 minutes. Right. Dungeon and Karazhan covered. Next, we'll cover raid one of two, released in phase two. That's so crazy. All of that, all of that together, it's just, that's what you have to do in phase one. You have to do that in phase fucking one. Oh my god, if you rush content, you'll get burned out. Um, I'm not gonna try to be like world first, like level 70. I'm gonna try to just play the game a lot and just do it at a good pace. Like that's all. I, I just wanna I wanna clear the raid at a good pace and do the content at a good pace. I'll play the game all the time, hopefully get some week one kills, but if not, it, it isn't the end of the world. Like the 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 thing is that in Karazhan, like two or three pieces of gear drop from some bosses, and there's ten people. Like it, there's, it's so easy to gear out in Burning Crusade compared to Classic. So if I'm not getting the gear in week one or week two, it's not the end of the world. Like really, it, it's it's just not. And then you can buy the badge gear too. Like I'm gonna have to get my Bloodlust brooch and like a number of other things too. Uh, I'm not worried about it. Just enjoy the nostalgia, dude. Well, that's why I leveled off stream for TBC. And also because I thought it was boring content. But like, um, is I just did the quests and I just played the game off stream by myself and it was really nice. And that's the Serpent Shrine Cavern. To start it, you need to enter the Slave Pens on Heroic Mode. About halfway through, after doing that big drop down, at the end of that room will be a caged prisoner. Yeah, Scarthus, this little the heretic. dick boy. He'll ask for two items. This little dick the Earthen boy. Signet and the Blazing Signet. The blazing signet you get from Nightbane, as described earlier. Oh wow! So you this is something that you can pick up as soon as you unlock the Coilfang heroics. So Jesus. I do advise you do that before you do your Karazhan run. As for the Earthen signet, you get this from Gruel the Dragon a Killer. Big dumb idiot. He's the second and final boss of the Gruel's Lair yeah. 25 Man Raid, which can be found right here in the Blades Edge Mountains. No attunement is required for this one, so join 24 guildmates and just zone in and get her done. Turn him back into Scarthus, and you'll be attuned for the Serpent Shrine Cavern. And next, Christian we have Zach the second raid of Phase nope, 2, I want to do it all and by myself. Tempest Keep. Have a little bit to of attune fun, to you this know? one, you first have to complete the Cypher of Damnation quest chain, Yep. which is a very long quest chain started in the Shadow Moon Very zone simple, very from easy. These Earthmender NPCs for Horde and Alliance. It's quite time-consuming, comprised mostly of soloable quests that are all pretty straightforward. Again, I won't go over each and every one for the sake of video length and not completely spoiling it. The finale quests do require a group, though. Specifically oh, for yeah. an NPC this is the guy that flew the Darkener around. and Siruk the Fire Lord, so you'll need to find some friends. Oh, yeah, that's the big guy that they summon in front of Gul'dan. Damn. And then, yeah, Ornak Tornheart, that's the guy that gives you the axe, the green axe. It's actually really cool to see these again. Because like, I don't remember the quest lines that well at all. For that part, completing that entire chain unlocks a new quest from Khadgar and Chatrath called the Tempest Key, which leads to the Naru Trials. For the Trial of Strength, you need to go to the Steam Vault and loot a trident off the final boss there, Jesus. Warlord Calithresh. You also need to loot the Essence of Murmur, who's the final Jesus. boss of the Shadow Labyrinth dungeon. And the Tenacity Trial requires you to go to this the Architect rush, dungeon though. on Heroic Mode and kill the final boss while keeping Millhouse Mana Storm alive. Architraz Heroic, back in the day, Architraz Heroic was no joke. Like, that was no fucking joke. I remember I went in there and it took us like three hours. It was brutal, man. You'll be summoned during the final boss gauntlet mm -hmm. and you simply can't let him die. And it's pretty unforgiving if you fail, as you'll have to wait for the next lockout to try again. The Trial of Mercy requires you to go into the Shattered Hulls Heroic yep. and reach this is the, the Executioner speed before he executes Apparently all the prisoners, 55 minutes. which is 55 minutes. Yeah. But this timer only starts after the first boss, and like boy howdy, place. was it a daunting task back then. It was I not. do plan on making Heroic Guides for each and every dungeon, so if you find yourself having trouble with this part, or any of these Heroics for that matter, check out the channel and you might find a guide for it. Something that I want to note though, and a big time server that a lot of people trip up on, What's that? is this big hallway. You don't need you to don't kill to these kill... sparring orcs on the sides. Yeah. You can just walk right past them. You the kill executioner him for rep, himself is the guy right after Kargoth, the final boss. And it's basically... um, anybody, uh, any smart players, uh, before you pull the executioner, always put it on master loot. Because the executioner can drop primals. He almost always drops primals. And he can drop a primal air or a primal fire. Very expensive. Put it on master loot for greens. Very important that you do that. 
big primals. Quickly a call back to the timed Stratholme run that you needed for your tier 0.5 dungeon set, if yeah. you ever did that. And I, I just never like did the that tenacity shit. trial, if you fail, you'll have to wait a day for the lockout to reset, so that's pretty sucks. unforgiving. Damn. All three of these it doesn't matter though. To get the final like, trial, you'll be able to do it Theradon, easy. Which requires you to clear the single boss raid and oh, make Theradon to Lair, which can be found at the bottom of the Hellfire Citadel approaching from the west side. To doing Mac Similar to Gruul's Lair, this particular raid doesn't require an attunement, and I do plan on making full raid guides for him. And turning that in attunes you to the Tempest Keep raid. The I really, really, really do not want to do fucking Mac Theradon. Because, like, you have to organize everything. Like, I hate organizing and planning things. I just want people, and like, also, and then they don't do their job. Like, that's what makes me mad. It's like, not only do you have to organize and plan this stuff, but then one person does it wrong, and it's a wipe. I just, yeah, click on the cube, and then they go to the cube. Well, wait a minute, was I supposed to click on it, or did you mean for me to click on it? Oh, 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 okay, well, we'll uh, I'll do it this time. Yeah, and then next one, oh, I lagged. Oh, I thought I was over there. It's just, I, I, I'm I, just not, I'm not about that shit, man. Fuck that. Aye. The next raids on our list are High Gel and the Black Temple, yep. which are released in Phase 3. Okay, if you're all cut up to this point, the attunement for High Gel is you had very to kill rage winner, chill. You'll need to have obtained Revered with the Keepers of Time, yep. which is the reputation tied to the Caverns of Time hub. Dern Hold Normal and gives you rep until honored, mm -hmm. and then Black Morass or any of these two on Heroic to Exalted. And once you're revered, find Sura Dormi inside the Caverns of Time for the Vial of Eternity quest. This requires you to obtain Kale's Vial Remnant from Kalthas Sunstrider, the final boss of the, the Eye and the Tempest right? Keep, and Vash's Vial Remnant yeah. from Lady Vash, the final boss of the Serpent Shrine Cavern. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward, which feels weird to say because back then, this was quite the task, I'll tell you what. Well, that's what happened really is like the entry quests were like really annoying because they weren't really hard to do but like the later quests weren't that annoying because they were hard to do it was like okay yeah just go in there and kill kill thoughts oh okay all right yeah let me just do that so that's what it was especially kill thoughts who went unkilled by like 99 percent of the guilds until he got hit by a nerf bat but again, yeah. if you've been following this guide, you should be attuned to both of those. And if not, you'll have to backtrack in the video. It's As mentioned, video. these only dropped a few at a time until the Black Temple patch. So if you're watching this prior to Phase 3, it might take you multiple clears to get your entire raid attuned. I don't but think they're going to do both that. Of them in, attunes yeah, to I highly Hijab. doubt that. And lastly, we have Illidan's Fortress and Cancelled Warlords of Draenor City. The Black Temple. Yeah. The starting location for the attunement chain depends yeah. on what Shatrath faction you chose. This was if the you're one. Aldor, you talk to this the got hand of a doll, I believe. right here in the Shadow Moon Valley. And if you're Scryer, you start with Arcanist Thelis, located right here on the map. I didn't like the Aldor and Scryer. Damnation quest line. I won't cover all of the Soul Obel stuff. I'll leave a bit for you to discover. Eventually, you'll reach a point in the chain where you need to find an NPC called Udalo inside the Architrice dungeon. He's a bitch. Or at least his body, which can be found in the room before That's the final boss. That's why he died boss. like a bitch. Following the chain will lead to a quest to kill the Shadow Lord Death Whale, found right here in the Shadow Moon Valley. He is an elite, so I recommend that you bring a group. And you'll then be sent to an NPC located inside the That's Serpent Shrine Cavern That's a lot of shit to raid. do, man. Holy Specifically, fuck. Specifically, you'll find him behind the Fathom Lord Carathress. So, following the theme of all of these attunements, you'll require the attunement of the previous raid tier. You'll then be sent back to the Tempest Keep to slay the Phoenix Alar while wearing the Ash Tongue Call Transmog. Asses of Alar. Asses of Alar, dude. Kill this guy. Yeah, it was. That's what I liked about, about TBC, though. I really thought the attunement structure was great. I, I was a huge fan of the attunement structure, and it was kind of sad that Blizzard got rid of it. Like, I was actually a huge fan of being able to do stuff like that, but unfortunately, uh, you know, it just didn't really happen. Um, like, every once in a while now, we get, like, kind of these minor, like, little attunements. Like, we got the Return to Karazhan attunement and stuff like that. But I actually really like the idea of being able to have to do this stuff. And the reason why I think it just doesn't really, like, go over as well as in retail is because every time that, like, Blizzard makes content that they expect a lot of people to do, they just assume that it has to be, like, super easy. So it's not, like, not... Like, back in the day, if you played Karazhan, or, like, you played BC to Karazhan back then, like, you probably have some memory 
of like the challenges that like certain heroics took or certain dungeons took or certain parts of the quest took or things like that and now it's like if you want to compare that to like your class order hall campaign it's not really there and following that you'll have to defeat the first boss of mount hyjal rage winter chill and loot his phylactery and from there you do some soluble quests until you finally construct the epic medallion of Karabor and you want to have that which doubles as a key to the black temple yeah it's much huge. like how the drake fire amulet served as the onyxia key and that's it the following raids Suleiman and sunmol plateau are freebies no attunement required. Sun was At a freebie, point, guys. Blizzard caved in to the gamer dads with 47 yeah. kids and 24 seconds a week to play the game. And the attunements <laughs> would see a big nerf, or they were even removed altogether in patch 2.4. Yeah. This concludes the guide segment of this video. But before signing off here, I do want to point you towards a handy add on called What's the Tune, which will help you keep track of all of this stuff so you don't need oh. to keep coming back to this video. Yo, I'm gonna get that. To my monotone, yet soothing and pleasant to listen to voice. Yeah. We'll get a mini map That's button. That's great. And either for vanilla or BC, you'll have a really nice interface wow. where you can keep track of character by character. Dude, where that's you are fucking in the chain. awesome. I'm gonna go do it's that. It's really nicely done, and I suggest it to everyone. I'll have a link oh in the God. description. But, anyways, thanks as always for watching. I hope you found the video That's helpful. Super useful. Like it if you liked wow. it. Wow. And I'll see you in the next that one. That is super fucking Peace. useful. That was a really good video. Uh, I feel like that was structured really well. I, I liked it a lot. And especially, like, a few of the Farewell little bits of information now, was great. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Yeah, somebody can link it. That would be great. See you again soon. Uh, I believe raiding guilds were complaining about having to attune recruits. I remember my raiding guild, um, you know, like that raid that I told you guys that I took Cody in and like Cody got better gear than Jeff all in one day. Well, that raid right there was the raid that we told people that if you don't come to this raid for your attunement, you are getting kicked out of the guild. Like you are no, like we're, we're sick of doing Kale. We're sick of doing Vosh. We don't want to do these anymore. If you don't come to this, you're kicked out of the guild.